everyone, and welcome to Shonen Archive, the thing we talked about very briefly in uh, Jim Pooty Jams. I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. Hello. And if you didn't watch the, the over an hour into a previous <laughs> video, uh, <series laughs> that we do, let me explain to you what this is real quick. So me and Zen absolutely love uh, a lot of Shonen Jump stuff, uh, both manga, anime, all that kind of stuff that you can kind of put in there, games, whatever you can think of Shonen Jump related, coasters, whatever, we're into that shit. But there are specific series that we've never been able to get into, either because they're too long or they're hard to find or it's hard to justify watching at any given point unless we were doing it for a very specific reason like trying to find the motivation to watch something like uh this is a good example and we're also probably never gonna watch it one piece which has over like a hundred a thousand episodes yeah you to have, jesus you need to have some strong will to watch every single episode of one of those things in a similar vein uh, if you were to watch every single episode of Naruto, that would also take, I would say, a significant amount of force, especially if you are not watching it week to week when it's specifically released. Um, and because of that, uh, because there's a lot of Shonen Jump series that are just like that for us, we decided to actually give ourselves the motivation and just actually create a series in which we can watch them and then talk about them, and that way we can always justify it to ourselves. That we yeah, we don't have to validate. <laughs> Exactly. So we have uh, here at the start, we decided to start with Gintama. Gintama. Is that how you pronounce it? Gintama? I have been saying Gintama because his name is Gintoki. Yes. Okay. We'll go with that. Well, it's just the Japanese word for silver. So Gin is silver, yes, which I know because of shooting star Gin. Uh his name is also silver. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> We're going to start with Gintama because this is probably the biggest, in terms of Shonen Jump series, maybe one of the biggest ones outside of One Piece where someone will say, that has a loud fan base saying, you should really watch all the anime, and the anime is over 367 episodes. <laughs> so to start with, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's a lot. So for the beginning, we aren't going to see all 367 episodes. We are at least going to start with season one and see where it goes from there, starting with five episodes. Um, before we get into actually what the episodes start, I may as well give some little fun facts because I wrote them down for here. So, of course, Gintama stands for Silver Soul. And I think there's a joke in the first episode that says there's also a way to read it to be called Testicles. Yeah, if it's apparently it's uh not they it says make sure you don't write it as Kintama because Kintama means testicles. <laughs> I was like, all right, I didn't know anything about that, but sure, <laughs> I, should, I would just uh, t- I'll take their word on it in the terms of the Japanese uh, writing of stuff. Like I said before, Gintama has over 367 episodes. The anime is weirdly broken up, where I want to say it's like 202 for the base series, which is called actually gintama and then from there it's uh animes with like specific like titles in it um i think they have a breakdown of it on actually crunchyroll if i actually go look at what they have there because they have um a season breakdown i think it goes yeah seasons one two three and then from then on it's like season but for some reason it ends at like 202 for Season two for some reason it's really it's a really weird breaking up. I think I'll probably have to. Well, look didn't into it get that. canceled and then and then revived? Did it? I know it did. I, I know it got canceled at some point. Well, here's um, another thing I remember is that Gintama was has also notoriously had multiple endings of their anime. <laughs> there's been there's like multiple like right, but I thought that was because it got canceled. Huh? Really? We're going to have to do a little bit more research into that because it's from the base of what I was looking at, I was like, I don't know why it's broken up this way. It would make a lot of sense if it was actually canceled at some point. If you actually know, feel free to tell us, and that will save me some time actually looking at it for myself. But 367 episodes, at least 25 minutes in length if you count the OP and an ED. And based off of my very bad Wokey math, I have could determine that that is at 25 minutes, 367 episodes, that is 9,175 minutes. And it would take you around 6.371528 days to watch it fully. And that's assuming <laughs> you are watching it 24 hours at a time. You would have to watch it basically in a week. No sleep, nothing. Uh, that's insanely long <laughs> when you put it out. The funny enough, that is very it, long. Yeah, 
Yeah, funny enough, but if you put it into the days and you go like, okay, well, if I spend around 12 hours watching it, it would take you about 12 days in theory. But still, that is an insane amount of episodes. And still, funny enough, not the longest uh, Shonen Jump thing out there at all. In terms of, like I said previously, One Piece is definitely up there. Um, also, its original manga run was from December 8th, 2003, and then it ended on June 20th, 2019. That's for the full manga run right there. In the beginning, the first episode's release for the anime was actually three years after the manga started. It was on April 4th, 2006. So three years later, which might explain why episode one and two are made the way they are. <laughs> and yeah, and this also was created by, I'm going to fuck up this name so badly, Hideki Sorachi. I want to say that's how you pronounce his name. I just wanted to say his name. Uh, his yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. Close enough. Yeah, close enough. Uh, if you have an exact pronunciation, feel free to leave it down below, and I will gladly learn it. <laughs> but other than, other than that, I'm going to roll with what I said. So let's start. Episode 1 and 2, which are technically a hour-long special that introduces a bunch of the characters. Uh, the names of it, You Bastards, Do You Even Have a Silver Soul? Which is part 1 and part 2. That's both episode 1 and 2. Zen, if you want to start it off with telling us trying to sell us very briefly what happens in episodes one and two uh very briefly um this guy that comes to their shop and he says that he needs help getting his house back because he was swindled and they lost his house and his family left him and all this stuff um and eventually they agree to help him and they find out that there's a plot by these aliens that invaded japan the a long time ago and like yeah, that made like a futuristic society uh, yeah. that they're going to cause earthquakes in to what's Tokyo, but Edo at the time mm. um, and cause all of the human made buildings to collapse because they're not durable enough. And then they will resell all of the land um, to, to, I guess, to aliens. Uh -huh. And so they have to rush in and stop them by hitting the giant machine with a wooden sword. Yeah, and they do that perfectly. <laughs> they also try and... <laughs> uh, and that's basically the sum up for that, the, that hour-long special. This is actually a very weird thing, because like I said, it did come out three years after the manga. So my assumption was actually... You had no idea of this until I told you, but this is filler. This is not actually how the manga starts. Um, because by the point that you're watching this, it's like fully on. It's basically introducing like it's like it's actually I feel like almost every five minutes it's introducing a brand new character to you. Like yeah. So I, I had wondered why it was going the way it was because it I didn't know that those were filler episodes because I had never read the manga either. Um, but it says that like like you go through all that whole thing and then in episode three they introduced Shinpachi and I was like wait a minute. Yeah, they go, they go I already back knew a this year. guy. <laughs> they go back a year to the start of the entire series. Uh, yeah, it's pretty... It's an interesting way of doing it. I want to say it's because t the 2000s was a very weird time for shonen anime in general. Um, it's hard to explain exactly how I'm feeling about it, but it's like... Maybe it's specifically because of Naruto and it's so much like crazy filler that I feel like just back then the people were more okay with just like having filler for some reason. Or maybe it was actually what year did Naruto release back then? The animated version yeah. or the anime version, not the, the uh, was early early 2000s. Uh, this says the Assuming the sub, uh, 2002. Okay, 2000. So there's no way for the crazy filler to have started. But either way, I feel like back then they felt like it was easier to just do. Well, no, no, no. Because I mean, Dragon Ball had filler, and that shit came out in the 80s. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Dragon Ball had a lot of filler, but I feel like even, but even the episode one of Dragon Ball wasn't like a filler special to introduce it. But maybe well, it's also no, episode one wasn't. But but there was a lot of filler in no. Dragon Ball in Dragon Ball Z. There was a crazy amount. I forget sometimes, but there is definitely a lot of it. I think it probably is likely just because it's like three years and they're like, okay, we're basically going to introduce every single character and then we'll go on from here. It's a very interesting way of doing it, but maybe they just wanted to be like, we want to show you what the comedy is going to be like 
just in case those first couple episodes don't necessarily show you what it's going to be eventually <laughs> is what is my guess to it it's like eventually it will get to this pace but you're just gonna have to wait a little bit for you to get there and for all these characters to show up that's my assumption on it anyway i don't know how you actually didn't know it was filler so did you feel like there was anything weird about specifically starting it off this way uh, I didn't feel like it was weird until after I had gotten to episode three, but I had just kind of brushed it off as like, uh, oh, we're going back in time to now tell how this group got together and then we're going to pick up from where we left off. But we didn't really get far enough to get to like, I don't know. It, it struck me as like odd for a second, but I didn't really dwell on it. I was like, that's strange that we're just now meeting these characters we spent that last hour with, but whatever. <laughs> Fair enough. And for the actual episode, I thought it was actually a pretty good just introduction. It does it very quickly tries to tell you everything. It's like, okay, there's a sword band. There's a bunch of aliens. It's the Edo period. Uh, here's these characters. Let's go. <laughs> there's like really no space to do anything. They also introduce this man. Yeah, well, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of like actual historical elements woven in there. Yeah, like so the it was like the Shinsengumi and the sword band was a real thing. Um, oh, I didn't know the sword band. Yeah, so like when at post age of the samurai or whatever, um, you weren't allowed to carry swords in public anymore. Oh. Uh, in real life, that was a thing. Smart um, <laughs> to take away their swords. Yeah, so they basically, basically, the aliens in Gintama are just like the black ships, the the whole coming of the black ships, and like the Tokyo and and Japan opening itself up to foreign interaction because it was extremely uh, insulated and like. Hostile. I don't know if xenophobic is the right word, but it's very hostile I, to. I would say back then, like, it, it, it's yeah, a fair, it, 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 it didn't want anyone from outside Japan influencing Japan. And then you know the whole the whole coming of the black ships and all that stuff, and the uh, I think that was America, right? Was that America? No, was it? I don't think we were around back then. I, some of my history is real <laughs> fucked up. If you were to tell me that America was founded by the time that people like. Actually, it would have had to probably been because it was gunpowder back then, and we had yeah, it was gunpowder. It was it was firearms that. Yes, it was America. The black Holy ships shit. was You're the completely... name given to Western vessels arriving in Japan in the 16th and 19th century. Uh, originally, it was the Portuguese, and then uh, it, it it expanded out. And there's like drawings of American ships and stuff in like Japanese paintings. Um, but that's basically like the period where um, the capital moved out of Kyoto to Edo and then Edo eventually became Tokyo it's, it's like right around then like gotcha. post the decline of the samurai um interesting it was like that period of Japanese history where samurai were basically out but they were still like holding on to the whole like Bushido mindset and like they didn't you know you had these elements that didn't want to modernize that wanted to resist yeah. and not join like the global stage kind of thing they wanted japan to stay japan and stay like to its traditions and its roots and you kind of have that in gintama as well with the the terrorist organization that's in episode four or five one of the two five i think it's five five Um, yeah Um, talk about this in samurai shampoo too right shampoo said uh bits and pieces in samurai shampoo there's a lot of it in uh roroni kenshin which is where i know Uh, that's why you uh, i don't think i've ever seen roroni kenshin (laughs) Yeah, so uh, Okita as well, the character in Gintama, yeah. was a real person. Yes, uh, um, Hijikata was also real. You know this yeah, because and then of Okita Rioni is Kenshin. also a character in... because of Fago. <laughs> That's how... Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> That's how Okita Rito. is also in Roroni Kenshin, but it's... And, you know, even in Roroni Kenshin, he's like the, the, gre- the best swordsman in the Shinsengumi. But the Gintama joke that he's the best swordsman in the Shinsengumi because he has a fucking rocket launcher is the funniest <laughs> shit. It's I so re- fucking funny to me. Oh, that would explain a lot of why he has it. That does make way funnier yeah, that way. Yeah, it's because he's the best swordsman, but he never fucking fights. He just has a rocket launcher. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good, gang. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, yeah, so a lot of those characters kind of get quickly introduced here. I will say for the actual main plot point, the guy who has like the sad backstory of, I lost my job. And then I lost my my um, my wife and my kid, and then I lost my house, and now 
he's like, oh, let me just kind of pause here. And they're like, what the hell happened to you? He's, he's like, because it happened like every week. He's like, okay, first week I lost my job. Four weeks ago I lost my job. Three weeks ago I yeah. lost my wife. <laughs> and they're just like, at that point, they're like, what the hell happened to this guy? <laughs> Why do you just keep having tragedies every other week? <laughs> it keeps happening to you. Uh, I thought that was pretty funny in that case. And he has some pretty good gags in general. Like, they try and teach him how to fight. And it turns out he's not a very good fighter. He could probably be a very good, uh, what the fuck is it called? The the people who, like, torture people for fun. Mm. Masochists? The one who sadists? did it to them. Sadists. Yeah, he's like, you would make an excellent sadist. He's like, that's not what we're trying to... I don't know how far we got off of the training that we were trying to teach him how to fight, and now he's just a very good sadist. <laughs> I also like how he, uh... He just leaves, and they're like, yeah, we couldn't do it. And uh, Gintoki's like, yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> just yeah. like... He just kind of fucks off for that part of the... He's like, all right, yeah. I'll, I'll see I you like later. how much of the episodes are him just, like, fucking off and not wanting to get involved and then eventually needing to. Yeah. I, there's a specific attitude for him that I think is actually kind of nice compared to most, like, uh, main characters in these types of comedies, usually they are the ones who are super crazy and outlandish. Like, obviously, the straight man is Shin, uh, Shinpachi. And in theory, uh, Gintoki is supposed to be the one who's, like, causing, like, all the mischief and the reason why everything's gone bad. But he's really just not that. He's really just kind of like, oh, man, we should really check to see if Shonen jumps in stock. It's yeah, not... that's also good. Like, <laughs> he always has the... He kind of, like... He's not the straight man, because obviously Shinpachi is, but he's, like, in the middle of it, where he's just kind of done and doesn't give a shit about 90% yeah. of the stuff that's going on. It's pretty good. He, I do like, uh, he also has a lot of references. I don't remember if it's in the first episode, but he's just kind of like, <sighs> really could use Bankai right now. <laughs> really wish yeah. I had Bankai. I wish I had a Bankai. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be very helpful right now. <laughs> but he definitely feels like kind of like getting with then when the shit starts hitting the fan he's like not indulging in it he's just kind of like oh god why is everything going so bad oh no <laughs> everything's so bad we have to fix this now and then the other one then he also gets angry at them because they're also not helping with the situation at all so he's definitely a very interesting choice for a main character uh because you know, like i said usually in these types of roles the main character is the one who is causing all the mess and he does i think once or twice but for the most part he just kind of wants to stay out of it he just kind of wants to do whatever enjoy his life kind of just do his job i don't think in the first five episodes he's ever actually caused the problem yeah i don't think so he's kind of done it by accident but it's the only time i can think of is when uh he beats up the one official in episode three but he was doing that mostly to protect shinpachi so it's like it's kind of that situation it's almost like samurai shampoo where uh You've got, like, the rowdy assholes causing trouble, and he mm. stops them, but then he's the one that gets in trouble. Yes. Actually, it is exactly like that opening, except for without yeah. the, uh, the Momo. <laughs> the difference is that it's not a girl. Um, but yeah, Momo? I thought this... You mean Foo? Foo, fuck. Foo, who am I, fuck am I thinking of? Who's Momo? <laughs> is that the name of the um, Maybe? I mean, hang on. Let me look up. Yeah, look it up. Either that or I'm... Foo's the squirrel. It is Momo. Yeah, Momo's the squirrel. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so I was in the general vicinity. They are always linked together. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the the, fir- the first two episodes, even though it's, maybe it's just because specifically I read the manga, I thought it was an interesting choice. And to be fair, whenever a friend told me to start Kintama, he said maybe you should save that for a little bit later because it comes off a bit weird. But I think it only really comes off weird if you are familiar with the manga otherwise it's just a very quick way to introduce a bunch of characters really quickly and there's also some characters where they just get like screen time and then nothing else shows up like like elizabeth she just kind of shows up and is elizabeth like, hey. i legitimately like don't find the joke for her very funny which is um, just that she exists yeah because the joke is just that she exists but the way that she's used in series is funny when they're in that cage and they're like, how the fuck do we get out of here? And they just turn around and she's standing there just staring into the cage. <laughs> <part>. <laughs> That's funny. 
But the actual joke that's just like, what is this? This is a weird thing. is like, not that funny. But. Yeah, but to be fair, I don't think they really dwell on her looks that much. I think they just kind of go like, oh, hey, Elizabeth. But I also feel like that's because you're supposed to know already know who that character is in a weird way. So it's just kind of like, this is this person. But we'll see when we Which, yeah, find- I don't think we've... You don't meet her again after that point. Like, she hasn't been reintroduced, even though yeah. um, Katsura is. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to probably wait to see that one. Doesn't he also? Doesn't Elizabeth also hold up a sign? I forget what it says, but they're like as they're getting out. I think they hold up a sign and says like, it says something. Fuck, I wish I remember what it was. But it was very much like a a quick comment about what was going on. But yeah, some of them. Oh, the one where um, Katsura runs all the way after like he's been running the whole time, yeah. and they drove all the way there. So he's been running the entire episode to get there. <laughs> you <should> get a <laughs> car. And she holds, yeah, she holds up the sign that says "Buy a car." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> he's like out of like dying on the ground, like exhausted. Yeah, and so she it's says, very buy a car. Where if it was actually a regular person, they would totally just say that line. But it's way funnier and when it's just a person who's just like out of context holding up a sign that says, "I don't know, maybe it's funnier when I see a sign." I think signs are funny. <laughs> that's why Wiley Coyote is so funny. It's because he has so many signs that he can just point up. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I think that's basically it for one. Oh, the other funny thing is that the, the, one of the characters, the ninja one, I think Sa- Sachan, is that her name? The, the one that shows up uh, with the, the... Of beans. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, shit. I don't fucking remember the girl's name. Um, I think it is Sachan. Cause she's only in the first episode. Yeah, and then they make a comment, and at the end of the episode, she goes like, I, I forgot I was supposed to be here. <laughs> they do a very quick, like, oh yeah, I was in the beginning of this. She kind of just disappears. Sarutobi Ayami. Oh, okay, Sarutobi Mostly Ayami. referred to as Sachan. Okay, perfect. But she does have, like, a very quick joke at the end. It's like, oh yeah, I was supposed to be there. Uh, I wasn't, though. <laughs> so, yeah, or the, that's yeah. the end the plot point right there. Where did I go? I don't know. I just kind of went away. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but yeah, that was the first kind of introduction for it. How'd you feel as an introduction for it? Uh, just for episode one and two? Yeah. It was good. I thought the humor was pretty good. Uh, I don't love all of the jokes in it. I think some of them are kind of just like, meh. But episode one and two had some good ones. I really liked the way that they did the we're going the wrong direction joke. Because that's like a classic stupid joke that normally isn't that funny. But the yeah. way they sell like the fact that he crashes his fucking scooter after he says that was funny as shit to me um all in all i think they were good I, I, the only thing that's jarring about it is that they give you like 48 characters and then they're like okay they're all gone <laughs> and you have to re-meet them again later that's the only weird bit yes i would say that's true too it's a very interesting choice but i don't think it's like a huge hindrance because it was a very maybe it really was a special kind of be like hey we want to get you interested in this here's a very quick way very like simple setup and there we go easy to go one two three obviously some characters get a little bit more than others but that's why their singular introductions kind of get their own thing but next let's go on to episode three amongst natural perms there is no bad guy this is the actual legitimate start to the uh series at least in the manga wise, and this is the animate for it. So do you think you can run very quickly what it is? I can't do it because of my job. If I try and do something quickly, I end up giving like 27 different plot points <laughs> of trying to go deep <laughs> into it. Sorry, it's just my job. It's forced me to be this way. Hello? Zen, are you there? Hello? Oh, oh okay. sorry. Are you there? Hello? Yes, yes. Hello? We almost lost the oh, brief. You cut out on me for a second. You, okay. you cut out on me there for a second. Re- repeat that bit. Oh, shit. I don't even remember. I was going to say, okay, go go ahead, Zen. I was going to say, basically, that's it. My job <laughs> screws me on this. You're going to have to... Oh, okay. To tell about episode three. Mm-hmm. See, the problem is I don't remember them in exact order. Episode three is where he meets Shinpachi because he beats the shit out of these officials, and then he frames him <laughs> by leaving the bloody wooden sword in his belt. <laughs> yes, um, yes. And Shinpachi chases him down, and then they have, like, a silly-er, not, like, that silly, but silly-er version of, like, the 
you have to sell yourself to save your dojo by making his sister go be like a a high leg bikini model. Yes, which funny, um, enu- funny enough, uh, apparently when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's kind of like a no pun shabu shabu, which is what I know it. But he was in a high leg shabu shabu, I think. But then apparently in the manga, they she actually is supposed to go work in a uh, in a no pan shabu shabu type of nightclub. But they changed that for the anime because you can't have no pun on a uh, shonen jump anime. I guess. <laughs> I guess. That's I was funny. Like, oh, okay. But I was, but funny enough, what I was looking was like, oh, this kind of reminds me of no pun shabu shabu. And then later on, uh, when I read that, I was like, oh, it, it really it originally was that. It's like, oh, <laughs> that explains a lot of what he was acting later on as well. <laughs> but continue with what you were saying. Uh, yeah, and so Gintoki finally agrees to help save his sister, and they rush this flying nightclub that looks like a like a ship, like a water ship, like an old boat. Like the ship um, from Mario. Yeah. Just kind of or, like, or like an old Final Fantasy airship. And then uh, they like Gintoki climbs up the engine and blows it up, and it just crashes. Right. And then he's kind of arguing. I think it ends with him arguing with the police of saying, I saved the day. I think I should be let go for stealing a cop car. And yeah. <laughs> he's like, I think I should get some leeway on this. Uh, which is pretty funny. Which is it's it's a really funny conversation to have in the background with like Shinpachi kind of going like, I think I found the man that I want to follow, someone who kind of represents that. Material. Then you see him in the background kind of going like, Come on, <laughs> this yeah, is- he's like his uh, his samurai soul is shining, and he's in the background like, Ah, all I did was steal a cop car. <laughs> it's not that bad in the grand scheme of things. I saved the day. <laughs> but yeah, that that's the episode. It's episode three. Um, I thought it was a pretty good introduction to stuff. It's a lot easier to do an introduction for singular characters when they got the main focus. Uh, it kind of sells a lot of what Shinpachi is, which is that he's the straight man. Kind of shows his dojo. Gives a little bit lo- more look of the post-samurai life where they're saying, like, yo, this sucks. Like, th- th- the only thing I was ever really good at was trying to be a samurai, and now that's illegal. And now... No one respects you. Nobody cares about anything you do. And the Amato, which are the the alien dudes, are just massive assholes. <laughs> so, such yes. prick <laughs> Huge dicks. So far, I don't think we've met a single one that's good. <laughs> They're all just dicks. Uh, Kagura is one, sort of, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, that's one. But even she sometimes acts a little bit. She's like a well-meaning dick, though. <laughs> but you're right. She is. Uh, she does count as one. Uh, the other kind of th- jokes I like in this is when he's talking about his air fortress, and he's like, "Oh yeah, uh, what? The, technically, and this would be illegal down here, but because it's in the air, it's okay." It's like <laughs> the logic of like, "Oh yeah, because it's in the sky, the the the, the sky, the the laws do not apply to what I want to do." <laughs> kind of reminds yeah, me. Yeah, it's of, really just because I'm in the air. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can do whatever I want. Kind of reminds me of the plot point of Bioshock Infinite, which the whole reason that the floating city in the sky is a thing is so he could escape American law (laughs) and go straight to the sky. So he could do his weird worshipping things. But yeah, uh, pretty good setup. Some quick uh, gags in the background, like when they're at the weird high top place, they show the hairy alien race. I don't know what they are, but they keep showing them. I think they were in the first episode too, but in this one they show like a female version of it and it's exactly the same as the male version. <laughs> you can't really tell yes. much of a difference. <laughs> yeah. Which I appreciated <laughs> for the aliens. It was like, yeah, you. a lot of people usually make the lady version of the alien race more attractive, but for this one they're like, nah, they just look exactly the exactly same. Exactly <laughs> the same, yep. Go for it. So yeah, I ended up liking it um, a good amount. How did you feel about it? It was good. Uh, I like the sister character. I think she's funny. Um, I liked the whole uh, the whole bit where he fucking crashes the entire ship, and then he's just like, ah, it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, the I also like the bit where he's like trying to get up into it too, and like the cop car is trying to. He's like, you need to put on a helmet, and he's like specifically talking about like 
for this time period, it doesn't make sense. And the cop's like, no, you're right. But I, 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 I'm just really looking for your well-being. Can you please put it on? <laughs> and he goes, no. <laughs> he's like, why are you being so stubborn? <laughs> like, the whole reason he's trying to pull him over is that he's, he's not breaking any law. He just really yeah, is careful. Yeah, he's just like, hey, can you, yeah, could you put a helmet on? And he's like, no. No, I don't think so. And that's the whole reason why they even start chasing him for any reason, <laughs> which I thought was funny. Uh, continue with what you were saying. Um, I liked the the bit where uh, he's like, "Go, go, take your sister and get to an escape pod, and I'll hold them off." And he t- he's there for less than a minute, <laughs> and he's like, "Hey, it's really hard, okay." I underestimated <laughs> it. <laughs> I, there was a miscalculation of what could be possible. Uh, that was really good. Yeah. I, I forgot about that, but yeah, the basically the Han soloing of I got this, and then the immediate like, oh, no, no, got this. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, is pretty funny. Uh, anything else? Um, not that I can think of in that episode. I mean, I like the um, the dynamic between the two of them. Yeah, I think it's a good starting dynamic for this one. Uh, if there was anything that would say this is probably a bit weird, it did feel really weird when that alien was just basically trying to assault her up in the sky. Yes, it did feel weird. It felt weird. Um, it felt like a real, it felt like that the, that character <laughs> had like a certain level of like menace and what he wanted up in the, I guess maybe it's specifically because what he wanted to be in the sky was just like a high leg nightclub was so specific it felt kind of it, it, like no pen actually kind of tells you he's a sleaze ball, but when you go so specific as a high leg, it kind of makes it go like maybe he's just a very specific fetished alien. <laughs> maybe he's not. Maybe he just has a really weird fetish. But now it's like it turns out. Oh no, he's actually a complete scumbag. <laughs> he's a complete monster person. Um, but yeah, other than that, I felt like that was probably the only thing that was that felt really weirdly out of place to me. Other than that, pretty enjoyable throughout. And some good jokes. So, that was episode three. And also the name of this episode, let's just say it again, is like, um, I wish, we have to start keeping notes of it because at the beginning, and also during the end for, and end scene, the, 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 the yellow text on top actually tells you like, something, it like talks to you <laughs> before you watch. Um, yes, that's like very old school anime vibes, this ad. Yeah, which was, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm so used to the new anime. There was something about that specific, like, oh, yeah. There was, like, a certain enjoyment of actually seeing it and kind of seeing what would be uh, said or said, something like that. It also kind of reminded me of translator notes, which is something that you don't get anymore unless you go into some really obscure manga (laughs) or go back to old ones. Kind of reminded me of that as well. Uh, But, yeah, that's episode three. And the name of the episode, Nobody with Naturally Wavy Hair Can Be That Bad. Which I think is a very good episode title. I think all the episode yeah. titles are pretty good. <laughs> They're all pretty funny, yeah. Yeah, and Tonka, this one might be the best one of these five, because episode four is the next episode, and the name of the episode is Watch Out, Weekly Shonen Jump Sometimes Comes Out on Saturdays. <laughs> yeah. Which, this one felt like the most, like, I was watching, and I was like, I bet Zen really appreciates just how deep he's kind of going trying to look for shonen jump because he really i, I also of, love like the existential crisis that he's having over it yeah he's just really he's re, he just really wants to <laughs> half this episode is introducing a new character and the other half is the existential crisis of trying to get shonen jump <laughs> early <laughs> or trying to get it right here on saturday um why don't you very quickly tell us what it's about uh, so there's this girl who is working with a gang. Um, she doesn't want to, but she's doing it for a better life. And her version of a better life is like slightly nicer uh, rice. Um, <laughs> so she cares about more. Yeah. Yeah. And so she's, uh, trying to get away from the gang. And so Shipachi decides to help her and Gintoki wants nothing to do with it because of, uh, he's trying to find a shonen jump. Yeah, and he can't, and then he ends up saving them at the last minute, and then they just take her in because she demands it. Yeah, yes, that's basically it. And she kind of joins up with their. I've, we forgot to mention it because so far it has outside of that very first episode, it hasn't really come up that much. But their job is to do odd jobs. That is yeah. their main job. <laughs> His name is just Odd Job. 
Odd job, Gintoki. <laughs> Odd job, Gintoki. He does mention it in the first episode when he's uh, trying to be like, not the first episode, the third episode, where he's like, I can repay you, check out my card. And then they're immediately like shitting on him, <laughs> like saying, like, what is the good of this? And this means nothing to us. Uh, but yeah, for this one, for this episode, some of my favorites is obviously the existential crisis of trying to get Shonen Jump on Saturday, because <laughs> I, I, for some reason, that felt like the most, I've, as someone who has to wait for Sunday Jump, if I knew Japanese, I would gladly go looking for Shonen Jump on a Saturday <laughs> to look for <laughs> whatever is coming out now. And like I said, he they really go out of the way. He's like checking every single like place to sew it. He's not even trying to like steal it or anything. It's really just him going up to individual stores saying, "Do you have it?" And then them going like, "Sorry, just sold out" or something like that. And, mm-hmm. the, and they and never have it. They never have it. And the one case of where they he almost has it is someone like doesn't like throws away their copy of Jump, and he looks at it like so excited. He does like this super uh, exaggerated jump towards it, and someone beats him to it at the last second. He was like, "Oh man, free jump!" Yeah, someone <laughs> sets it on a on a bench. And he, like, has a slow-mo leap off of the bench to grab it, and someone just walks by and picks it up. Yeah, just going, like, oh, yeah, sweet jump, <laughs> and then just leaves. I don't think he ever gets the jump either, does he? No, he does at the end. He, he, uh, somehow... he does, and then he rips it in half. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Denied everything. <laughs> but even outside of that, I really like... Uh... Kagura, I'm a big fan of uh, strong female characters in the, not, I was about to say in the actual sense of like, oh my god, they're so empowered, but also just, yo, this girl just fucks shit up. I'm always, This girl that beats the shit out of you? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Those are my favorite characters usually, <laughs> are the ones that are just super powerful. Um, if they're muscular, even better. But any form of just like pure power is good in my eyes. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. So her showing up and being as powerful as she is is pretty fun. Though it is also funny that she was not able to get out of that trash can when they were stuck inside the trash can. (laughs) So strong enough, but they still within the limits, I guess. Um, But also that she also just really likes rice. I'm also a big fan of that. Uh, um, She's basically like almost every single trope I can think of because she also has a little bit of like a broken Japanese and they kind of translate. Yeah, it as or her like, her dialogue is not right. It's like her grammar yeah. sucks. Yes, which I'm a big fan of in general because I also really like characters with heavy accents that help that are hard to understand at points. But I always go in like those. That's where the good shit is, and she has that basically. And then, <laughs> except for that one point where she speaks like perfect Japanese, and then he goes like, "How come your char- how come your character changed right that moment?" <laughs> And then she goes back to speaking like broken English. She goes like, "No, no, no, no! <laughs> like, like, go back. Why are you doing this? I need to know why." Oh yeah, when they're stuck in the trash can. <laughs> yeah, for like a break. And she moment. ran really. Yeah. Also, I like how his plan is: they're just gonna walk in this trash can, and they're in the middle of the street, and the two goons look at them, and they're like, "Well, let's go this way." <laughs> Yeah, they look. It's fun. Yeah, it's literally just like borderline Looney Tunes style. Like, dee, 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 dee. whoop. Oh, it must have been nothing. <laughs> Let's go the other way. <laughs> like Metal Gear Solid uh, style. Like it's just a box, and then leaving. <laughs> kind of like that. Um, I also like the silly Afro perm joke. I forget what she says. Like they, he keeps specifically saying like it's not an Afro, it's permed. He's, like, so specific about what he wants out of his gang of this specific joke. He's like, ah, oh, no, no, you're not you're not listening. It's not an afro. It's just a perm. I need you to specifically call the perm gang the right thing and go through yeah, that. Yeah, because they have unnaturally curly <laughs> hair or unnaturally wavy hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what that's what you that's what they're going through. So yeah, I ended up enjoying it. It was pretty fun. I liked it. Good introduction. Good shown and jumps thing. I think I'd probably out of the episode shown this one just because of the shown and jump stuff. This might actually be the one I like most. There's a specific gag in the first, fifth one I really like, but other than that, I think in terms of pure enjoyability, I like this. I enjoyed this one the most. Uh, how do you feel? Uh, it was very good. I loved the bit where they think they kill her because they hit her with the scooter and they're like fucking freaking out. Oh yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> when he's like trying to climb into the vending machine. <laughs> um, you just had a hit and then he's like, oh yeah, 
I'm sure they're fine. I'm sure she's completely fine. And then they roll her over and there's like blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I also like the bit after that where they're running away from the Yakuza dudes who are shooting at them, and she wakes up and just shoots the shit out of their car with her umbrella. Oh, and yeah. Shinpachi's freaking out. It's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah, both are really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it was my favorite episode because I really liked um, the attack on the flying ship. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really fucking funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was up there. It, it was a really good episode. Yeah. Good introduction for that. Good B plot story that eventually kind of goes back to the main one as well. And this is also where we learn that she's a, that there are actually good Amano people. She's supposed to be from the strongest race in general, and that's what yeah, the guy's she's trying like to. The... She's like the. Yeah, I don't remember the name specifically of it, but they at least say. I'm assuming that we'll get into that a little bit more later, but for now they at least say, "Hey, very strong." That's good enough for me. Yes. Um, Yato, that is the name of it. The Yato. Yeah, the Yato. Also, I thought it was funny as fuck that in the episode where they're going to save the guy's sister, he's like, can't you drive faster? And he's like, no, I can't. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. But then in the in this one, the, he's racing a train on his scooter. <laughs> that scooter has the, the, whatever is the needs of what he wants is how fast he can go. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make it seem like he specifically wasn't actually going that fast to help her. He wasn't. He didn't feel the urgency in there. He did for this one. Oh, that's right. And then when he hits him, he like puts him straight into the sky, right? Because because you think like in an actual sword, which is I thought what he what he was gonna do, which was just cut the trash can in half. But no, it's a wooden sword, so he just like yeets it into the sky. <laughs> Because the entire yeah, time he literally out. cracks the whole thing, and then it ends up breaking when it falls through the roof. Yeah, there you go. That's right. I thought that was. I I forgot that I was like, oh yeah, he doesn't use an actual sword; it's just a fucking straight up wooden sword <laughs> that he smacks him with. Um, oh, he also ends up giving a haircut to the to the the evil dude at the end. Kagura ends up giving him like a yes. Like, it, she cuts his uh she cuts his perm off. Yeah, completely. And I think she leaves a little thing on top of it. I think. I don't remember. I can't remember. If uh, she leaves, she leaves his... a frowny face on the back of his head. Ah, there you go. And also she eats all the snack shop, too. I think this is also where they show up the old lady as well, Atose, who was also in episode one, but she just the only joke she had in episode one is that she should he should sell his liver or his testicles if he wants to make the money that he mm-hmm. needs, which is so far. To pay I think the rent. Yeah, I think that's the only thing she really wants is that she just wants her rent and she doesn't mind them selling whatever body parts that they need to. And yeah, that's episode four. And then finally, of the fifth ones of the ones we've seen so far, the name of this episode is called Make Friends Whom You Can Call By Nicknames Even When You Are Already Old Man, which is the longest title for an episode, at least I've seen so far. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's up there for sure. Mm-hmm. Why don't you tell us, and this is the introduction for Azura, or as he's calls himself something. I think his actual name is Katsura? Katsura, ka, Katsura ka, it's, it's Katsura something, but they they he calls himself or or Gintoki calls him Zura, Zura. which he hates. But uh, go ahead, tell us what happens in this one. So a mailman crashes into their house, and um, he's like, ah, uh, uh, I I'm hurt. I can't deliver the mail. Please deliver this specific mail. And they're like, whatever, fine. And they go to the embassy, and the dog guard is like, that's probably a bomb. And he's like, it's not a bomb, just take it. And he smacks it, and it goes flying, and it fucking explodes. Yeah, huge Um, explosions. Yeah, it's a massive explosion. And so they run away, and they get saved by uh, Zura, who um, leads them back to their hideout. And he's like, he reveals that Gintoki was a samurai in the war against the, the aliens. And he wants him to come back, and Gintoki says no, and then the Shinsengumi attacks. Uh, and then it just kind of... Oh, yeah, there's a time bomb, and they end up uh, managing to set off the time bomb without killing anyone, and then everyone just kind of drops it. Yeah, everyone's fine. There is also a small kind of plot point where it turns out that... Um, uh... Uh, Zura was behind the, the 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 he's been behind the terrorist attacks, 
and he also has kind of been the reason like the the mailman that was supposed to deliver deliver the bomb is on his side and they kind of point together it's like hey there's the delivery guy i guess we now know what's going on with that and kentucky doesn't actually um get angry he just kind of goes like all right well yeah he's like was, okay like listen that i'm not joining your side but that also wasn't cool man <laughs> i need you to not do this i need you to stop being a terrorist like in, in so many words, it was a very interesting reaction. I guess to kind of show their friendship that he's not really that angry about it. He's just kind of like, oh, okay, that explains it. All right, buddy, we're gonna have to little, have a little bit of a chat about things real quick. <laughs> I also I like in that episode where they talk about how cliche it is that Kagura accidentally arms the bomb by poking at it. Yeah, that was pretty good because she does just kind of poke it, and then they go like. Oh. It's very much like defeated, like, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> of course, this is always the way it was going to go. Um, They also kind of get into his backstory a little bit, too, saying about how his time in the war, because the lead up of the Amato, because it was a war between the aliens and the regular, the, the humans on the side and Kentucky Sire served on the side of them or tried to. And then he just kind of disappeared one day. Basically, after the fight, the last fight that he thought he was going to die in, uh, that um, um, Zora thought he was going to die in, that was basically the last time we saw him. And he just and then they didn't see each other till right now. So I thought that was pretty interesting. They also show him in the old way he used to dress as well with a sword, which I know because I've seen it in Jambuti before. Uh, yeah, and I also it's it's in the uh, opening. Oh yeah, that's right. It is in the opening. Um. So yeah. This episode, uh, the f- I think the funniest thing for me is when they're trying to get rid of the bomb because he the, the specific screams that he does when he's like he's so like panicked about everything that's happening he's like oh my god he's, he's like the specific screams that he's doing just sound nothing like him and it made me really laugh <laughs> like it's hard to specifically like say the screams but he's like going in such a high pitched voice where you actually stop to think like. Because um, Gintama is usually like a very much a oh, oh, oh. he like he has a very deep voice, but then for that specific minute when he's like freaking out, thinking that it's gonna blow up in his hands, he's just like freaking the hell out. Um, they yeah. also do <laughs> they also do like a game which it's a Japanese game, so I didn't fully understand the rules of it. But at one point, I it think stopped. it's when whatever you say, you have to the next person has to say a phrase that starts with the last letter of your previous phrase. I'm pretty sure. I think so, yeah. But Kagura breaks it by doing the yo, Adrian. She was quoting Rocky. And then he gets angry because yeah. he goes like, you broke the game. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how you're supposed to. Who the hell is Adrian? Yeah. Uh, so I thought that was funny. So the entire things with the bombs, I really liked. And also the reaction of after he throws the bomb of just like, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to run now. And he immediately starts to Like, there wasn't even a try of like, Oh, it wasn't actually... Like, at no point does he ever say, like, oh, it wasn't us, because it's like, that's not going to happen. They're just... (laughs) Let me me stop you right there. No matter how hard we try to explain this, it's just not going to happen, so they just don't even try. Um, And even when they're viewed as terrorists, (laughs) when they're, like, known terrorists who did the bombing and they look at at them, it's like, that man, that's totally us. They really caught us (laughs) in those camera in in perfect view. Oh, my sister's going to be so angry with me. I thought that was funny. A lot of the stuff with the bomb. But it was a lot of just, like, kind of also learning a little bit more of uh, Gintoki and introducing another character. So, still good. I think this is also where the Shishin, Shishigumi also show up for the first time. Well, with Hijikata and, and Okita as well. Uh, other than, yeah, other than the first episode. Yeah, yeah. So, still kind of making through, through the, uh, looking through it. Oh, also because I specifically made you watch it so I could do it. There's a specific segment at the end after the credits, not after the end credits, after like the next time, next episode credits, where they do like a joke about a specific like, um, uh, I think it's called Ginpachi Sensei and he's teaching in class 3Z. I just wanted to bring it up because specifically this gag of them referencing this is is in a lot of Japanese stuff that I watch. And I, when I looked it up, I'm like, it's that show again. So if you don't know, there is a show in Japan that was released in the 1970, in 1979 called Kinpachi Sensei. 
And Mr. I think the official name is called Mr. Kampachi in Class 3B, which was super pivotal and super well known. And it constantly gets referenced in a lot of uh, manga or like joke things that I watch. So when it showed up here, I was like, "Holy shit, it's back!" <laughs> I can never escape this. This is the only thing. This is the only TV show I know because it get referenced so much in other stuff. So I just at least wanted to bring that up. I also thought it was pretty funny the stuff in there because he she's like. Uh, they're like talking about like, hey, sensei, can you talk about Kagura? Because she's just like, she's the the foreigner's just kind of eating a weenie in front of me. I think Okita's, <laughs> that's what he said. Specifically says uh, she's brandishing her wiener. Yeah, she's brandishing her wiener. I mean, she didn't show her eating the wiener. It's just like, <laughs> it's like the silliest wiener eating animation in the world. Yeah, she's like biting it and wiggling it around. Yeah. And I also they, like when uh, they're like, hey, you shouldn't be smoking in class. And it's like, I'm not. This is a lollipop. <laughs> he's like, uh, yeah, lollipops don't have smoke coming out of the end. And he's like, they do if you're licking it as fast as I am. And he pulls <laughs> it out of his mouth. It actually is. And I think that's it also. It actually is a lollipop, yeah. It straight up is, which is pretty funny. I think that's also a reference to the four kids censoring. Because at this point, I think it'd become pretty well known that Sanji's cigarette got censored as a lollipop, a lollipop. for yeah. four kids, yeah. So making fun of that, which I thought was pretty funny. So I liked that quick, like, little bit gag bit. He's also trying to say, like, I'm now going to explain to you what a Gintama is, and then he never explains it. Never does. Yeah, it no. never gets done. <laughs> never gets done whatsoever, and then they just kind of end it. And then I think it ends with the uh, Shinpachi going, like, man, I should really just transfer out of this class. This class sucks. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. So yeah, um, I thought it was pretty. I thought it was pretty good. And once again, another really enjoyable, just kind of quick watch. Um, what do you feel? Uh, I liked it a lot. Um, it was really good. It wasn't quite as good as the last two, I don't think. Um, mostly because I feel like the last two is like introducing the main main characters, and Katsura is not that. Like he's kind of just a recurring side character, as far as I'm aware. Um. So maybe it just didn't hit as hard for me. But I, I did like it. Yeah. I also like how his wooden sword can clash with real swords like no problem and it doesn't even chip or anything. Like no, it's obviously it's not. not gonna cut through it, even in like in real life you're not gonna hack through a wooden sword with a real sword. Like yeah. it's not gonna slice it like in an anime. But it doesn't even get like chipped. There's no like notches that get taken out of it. The damn strong <laughs> wooden sword. Yeah. It's gonna build. He's building up to the fact when he actually starts using a real sword, it's gonna be uh, crazy. That's what I'm assuming anyway. Is that when he eventually does use a real sword, that's when all the crazy shit is about to go down. He does get a real sword eventually. I know that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he just has to. They show him using it in this episode and talking about like, yeah, basically we were in a situation. Well, where... I mean, like in the future, he gets like a special sword. Oh, okay. I didn't know that, but now. Well, he it's it's his, his second limited has it the the yellow one. Oh, okay. That's once again Jim Pooty revealing the future for us. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but funny enough, it did, yeah, it did feel like it was a lot of the other side because they also showed in the, sh- the Shishigumi. And like you said, the Akita with his rocket launcher, the greatest swordsman yeah. in the world. <laughs> I also like how launcher. he keeps trying to kill the vice captain with the yeah. rocket launcher. Yeah, which is pretty funny, which is, uh, at least as far as I'm aware, is like the exact opposite relationship that they had, <laughs> where I don't think there was really any super animosity, or at least I've never seen that level of just like, damn it, I want to get... It's maybe the most, like, uh, asshole-ish version, because Okita's a very uh, popular Japanese figure in general. And, but he's usually depicted as heroic in some sense, and I think this is the most I've ever seen him depicted as kind of like a troll... <laughs> Just to, like a dick, yeah. yeah well, in like... Kenshin, he's kind of a non-factor. He's not really a thing. He he was alive when Kenshin was in the war, but he was very sick. Yeah, because he and dies he of dies. tuberculosis. Yeah, he dies of his illness before the actual series proper. Um, and you only see him in one flashback, and him and Kenshin never really even fight in that flashback. So he doesn't really do anything. He's just mentioned. He is seen on page, but that, that's pretty much it. Hmm. Yeah, interesting but yeah pretty enjoyable so far so those are the first five episodes we at least said to ourselves we were going to see the first five and then see where we go from there um i actually really liked it i think for a lot of people japanese comedy is a little bit of a hit or miss some people can kind of, i feel like more than any other form of comedy japanese comedy is a lot of 
throw shit on the wall and see what sticks the most. Like, not everything is going to hit, but the things that hit usually end up hitting pretty nice. It's definitely one of those things of, like, sometimes you'll watch... It. The, the thing that sucks the most is when you're watching it going, like, oh, man, just none of that did it for me, really. <laughs> I think that's the worst Yeah, part I mean, there's definitely some jokes in this that don't hit. Um, I don't know. I don't find, like, haha, he said balls, like, humor to be very funny. So they, they do that sometimes, and I'm like, I don't fucking care. Like but some of the jokes I find really funny, like when he thinks when he's like really mad because mm-hmm. someone he she think or he thinks someone stole his uh, chocolate. Yeah, and smart, yeah, Kagura gets a nosebleed and he's like, I could smell the sugar in your blood. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that shit was funny as hell. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Uh, I, I I can understand not liking some of the uh, like uh, childish humor. I really like childish humor, so it usually does it pretty all right for me. So I like usually a good ball or testicle joke, um, a good dick kick here and there. You just have to know when to do it. But obviously not everyone's going to enjoy that kind of stuff. As long as there's a good balance of it, I think it works out in the end. And I think there's a pretty good balance of stuff so far. So I think we're going to keep on continuing with Gintama, Gintama, at least for the first season. And then we'll see where we go from there. If we ever want to continue going forward or maybe... Uh, go into another season of another shonen and then come back to it a little bit later. Because uh, yeah, I, I definitely you... plan to keep going with it. I thought it was uh, really good. It it's very helpful that um, his voice actor is Joseph Joseph Joestar. Uh, yeah, that's right. He yeah, is Gin, uh, Gintoki's is. <laughs> he has a um, very it's good really voice. good. It's a fantastic voice. Uh, he also was funny enough. He voices uh, Switch in Sket Dance, uh, one of the main characters in Sket Dance, and there is a later on there is a crossover between Gintama and uh, Sket Dance, and they actually make uh, jokes about the fact that they sound exactly the fucking same. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. He's like the only difference is that uh, Switch has a he talks through a computer. So he, he kind of sounds like a little bit robotic because it's basically his voice being put through a filter. But he's like, they're saying like, you guys sound exactly the same. And he's like, oh, really? We don't, I don't really hear it. <laughs> so I don't know where you're going from that. But no, I don't think so. <laughs> so pretty good. But uh, yeah, so I think we'll continue. Uh, do we want to keep on going with the five episode? Or do you want to move it up to try ten? Uh, on now that there's a weekend between when we're doing it and think 10 should be doable. You think Cause so? Because I'll have all day instead instead of post-work only. Oh, that's true. So if we as long as we always record it on Friday, it should be possible, 10. And that will help us also go through it. Because I think I also did the numbers of it if we did it uh, five episodes at a time. Because I think season one is... Uh, how many is it? I think it's 51. So I think it would be 10 ep- ten videos later. So 10 weeks from now, we'd basically be done. Uh, as opposed to five weeks if we did it like that. So yeah, I think 10 episodes will go. And then we'll see how it goes from there. I think we also found the most damning thing of being able to try and explain what's going on. But I think we were able to get that done pretty well here, I think. Yeah, uh, uh, it's nice because it's a comedy series. So like you don't really need the, the nitty gritty. Yeah, yeah. We'll go into any specific gags that we like at the end of the explanation of it and stuff like that. If there's any plot relevant things. Because apparently there is a plot of Gintama. Apparently there's an entire... I remember because on Twitter, um, where you find all the the, the best slash worst takes in the world from anime, <laughs> apparently there are people who only watch the plot relevant uh, Gintama episodes and skip all the comedy things. Why? About, yeah, right. It's kind. It's <laughs> That's kind the of, whole point of it. I think it's very similar to the uh, JoJo part skipping, where I feel like people don't actually want to sit down and watch an experience all the way through it, which is including the parts that maybe you won't enjoy the most. And to be fair, they don't know if they're going to enjoy it or not. They just heard that they might not enjoy it because they hear it slow. So. I think very similar. I think a lot of people hear that the story beats of Gintama are great, but they don't want to watch a bunch of comedy to get to that point, which is a really weird thing to say, but uh, I guess... Yeah, well, like, that's that's the whole point. I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, it is. That's the whole point. 
I would agree with that. I think we're both in agreement of parts skipping around is a little bit weird <laughs> and not really what we're down for. I'm here for the entire experience. Though, funny enough, my one friend who's really been into Gintama and has been trying to, for the better part of maybe 10 years, to get me to watch Gintama has always told me, because I told him that once, and I think he said, like, really? That's interesting, because I like, I like those parts, but my favorite parts are 100% the... Um, the actual comedy bits that's the parts i care about most like i think it actually gets a little bit slow when they do all the story focused things and stuff it's like okay that's interesting i'll keep note of that as i watch it as well he was also the one that also very 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 clearly told me don't read the manga the best way to experience it is actually the anime so that's the other reason why it's always been taking me a very long time is that I feel like it's one of the very few things, uh, series out there where they just straight up tell you, no, just don't read the manga. You can just watch the anime and it'll be a much better and enjoyable, uh, watch because of it. Um, so yeah, we'll keep on going. So 10 episodes next time we'll do 15. Uh, let me see any lasting things that we want to say in it. How do you like in the uh, the opening and the ending? I don't know if you're skipping it or not. I I usually go uh, I'm not skipping it. I like both. Um, yeah. I think they're both pretty good. I really like the ending. I like the ending more than the opening just because I like the song more. Yeah. Um, the the really ending good. I like the ending has like I don't know if it's intentionally referential, but it feels like it has a bunch of um like vibes that I get from other old school anime openings. Like I feel a lot of Yu Hakusho in it, a lot of Kenshin in it. I have to pay more attention to that because I've just been kind of like vibing with it and kind of the one, the bit where he turns around and the zombies come out of the ground and he starts fighting them. I swear oh. to God, is like one for one from a Yu Yu Hakusho op. Oh yeah, you're. I should pay more attention to that because now that you mention it, yeah, there might be actual references to other stuff in there uh, that I I just didn't pick up because I was just kind of vibing with it every time I was watching it. Uh, but yeah, I also like the music in here too. There's like a almost like a rockabilly kind of feel for it, like the main like running away theme. Whenever it's like dun 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 dun, dun. <laughs> it's very hard to. Yes, it's it's really good. Um, the music, all of the music has been good. Actually, I don't think any of it has been like mediocre. Yeah, this um, is the very good rip off of the um a Star Wars theme as well. I think yes, the the Imperial March. Yeah, the Imperial March has a fantastic yeah. ripoff. <laughs> it was so funny. It's such a good ripoff. Oh, uh, yeah. So really, uh, well packaged stuff in general. I'm looking forward to continuing on and seeing where we go from here. At least for season one, and then figuring out where to go from there. Um, we have a short list. Maybe I should reveal eventually that we have what the list is of what we'll probably end up seeing here. We're specifically not. Um, targeting some things that we maybe have seen. You know what I forgot? We should totally add to the list that we're not going to be doing until way later because I don't think I can handle it. We should probably put in the Japanese version of Dragon Ball GT because I've never actually seen the Japanese version of it. And that's okay, the part, that's fair. that's the version every single GT apologist has ever told me is the thing that will change my opinion on GT. So I need someone to watch it with me and go like, it's as shit as <laughs> if it was in English. <laughs> I need someone to at least be there with me though i think you would probably be more kind on gt than i would be i don't know i hate gt a lot we'll see about that i don't know i well okay i hate the character designs in gt the actual content is hit or miss like i think the baby saga is okay to okay to good i don't think it's any uh, it's when not. they actually get to earth i don't think it's any worse than like the boo saga is um hmm but, like, every character design in GT looks like shit, in my opinion. Like, there's none that look good. Super Saiyan 4 Goku is as close as you get to, like, a good character design. Yeah. I could see that. I actually kind of like uh, Kid Goku, but that's because he reminds me of Kid Goku. But he's not Chonk, so therefore invalid. If he was only... If only they had returned yeah, to Gremlin. Yeah, he's weirdly muscular. He's like a, a funkily muscular child. He is. I want... If, you know how much better GT would have been if they had fat Pikachu Goku in it? It would have been easily. It would have saved the series. We would still have Dragon Ball Super today if GT had just went with uh, chonky, chonky boy Kid Goku over the muscular, lean version that we got instead. But anyway, that's the the end of Shonen Archive for now. Thank you very much if you've seen it all through. 
Uh, we will continue doing this as long as we can, as long as we remember to watch the 10 episodes. <laughs> so if there's no episode next week, then that means that we didn't watch 10 episodes in time. <laughs> but I swear to God, <laughs> we will do our damnedest. I will tell Zen, hey, remember we'll, the we'll, 10 episodes. Yeah, don't, don't let me forget, because that's no. the main thing that will happen, is I'll forget to do it. Yeah, yeah, I'll remind you every, like, three days or so. I'll do it. We'll do a basic episode check-in. And I'll also do it just to be so that there's no shame. So we'll both go like, hey, man, so how many deep into the 10 episodes are you? I'm at zero. Why don't you tell me how many you have? But we'll keep on track of it. Don't worry. Uh, and that's it for us, everyone. So we don't really have a call sign for this. So it's just us going to be saying goodbye, everyone. And we'll see you guys next time. If you feel free to watch the series along with us if you want. You see it as yeah, your if you've never seen Gintama, so. check it out. I think the first five was really good. Yeah, I think pretty solid starting out there for sure. Until next time, everyone, goodbye. You can't see me waving, but I am waving. You should say goodbye as well before I forget. Oh, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>